So I'm actually refilming the whole intro to this video because while setting up my new studio room in the basement, I found this. Now, what is this you may ask? Years ago, when I filmed the very first tutorial video for 3D printing on this channel, this was the 3D printed phone mount that I used to hold my phone when I recorded that video. And all those years later, I'm still using 3D printers and stuff that comes off those machines to accessorize and make my studio even better. But today, we're gonna be talking about something even cooler than a 3D printed phone stand. What's cooler than that? Well, crown molding. And not just any crown molding, RGB crown molding. How cool is that? Let's get started. So why RGB crown molding of all things? Well, one, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, it serves the purpose of being an accent to the background of my studio. It's, and unlike some other LED strip lighting, it's up and out of the way. I didn't wanna put lighting all over these walls yet because one, I really don't know what I'm putting on the walls yet or where anything's going. And two, I kind of find it distracting personally. So I'm not gonna do something that I personally find distracting on my own channel. So it's up and out of the way, which means also, along with it being, you know, RGB and all cool and whatnot, we can also use it practically. So if we're working on the desk and we're doing something with an overhead camera, I can turn it to white mode and just use it as a fill lighting. Or if we want to get some ambiance up in this room, I can turn it to red and make it all cool and danger and alert, or just, you know, green if we want to be more energy efficient. So how do we go about printing this and installing it? Well, let's go to the desk and take a look. So this is the RGB strip lighting that I used, and um, I really can't tell you much about it. I bought it at the Shenzhen markets earlier this year when I visited China, and I don't have a spec list or anything. All I know is it's, it's RGB, it's got a built-in diffuser, which is really handy. Uh, it's got sticky tape on the back for adhering it to whatever, and it's 12 volts, that, that's it. Oh, it comes with a remote too, so we can change the colors. And then it also comes with a barrel jack adapter here. This has the controller built into it. And then I just had to provide some source of power. So I have a bunch of 12 volt wall warts and adapters that I could use to power it. But as you can see from the Arjuba goodness, um, it's a bit more than just taped up to the wall. We have some 3D printed crown molding to design and print. So let's go over to the computer and I'll show you what we did. So these are the 3D printed parts I designed. In fact, I'm actually missing one part because I don't have an extra end cap to hold. Um, but these parts were designed with the goal in mind of design the part in CAD and then I can modify them to the use case in the slicer itself. So this is the holder for the RGB strip and I designed it with a couple things in mind. One, we needed a flat surface to mount the RGB strip to and it just sticks on with the double-sided adhesive on the back. And two, as you can see here in the back, it doesn't come to a sharp corner. The previous owner of my house did not do the um, greatest job of drywalling the basement and the corners are not the sharpest in the world. So this gives us a little clearance and a little wiggle room. And as you could probably tell, there's a little bit of gaps and alignment issues, but it doesn't really show up too bad on camera. So we have that. Two, I added some holes here. This will allow us to mechanically secure them to the wall. On the top, I did put some command strips to help them stick to the ceiling, but I did add some screw holes here so we can use some drywall screws to mechanically mount it to the wall. If you hit a stud, you hit a stud. If you don't, it's not that big of a deal. These don't really weigh too much. There's no active load on them. So I've had no issues with just putting a single drywall screw wherever it ends up, just to hold it in place for extra security. And then also, I spray painted them silver. Why is that? Well, I printed these in a lot of the extra pet G that I had left over from the giant Gundam build. So they're different colors. We want them all matching and going with a aluminum chrome metallic paint. One, it makes them all look the same. And two, it makes them more reflective. I'm trying to get as much light out of these as possible. So being able to bounce more light out helps. And then we have the diffuser itself. Now, since the LED strips themselves have built in diffusers, I didn't go with putting like a single layer of white pet G in here. This is just solid clear pet G. And I did put a little design on it uh, just to fancy it up a bit, make it a little cyberpunky. You can alternate how you install them. I'll have blank ones of these in the link just below where all the files for this will be at. So you can design your own if you want. And then also, these are all I use. These are the only two files and then plus the end cap part that I use for putting these up. And there's corners. How did I do the corners? Well, these are easily modifiable in your slicer. 
These are 250 millimeters long. That will fit on a Prusa Mark IV S. I did print several of these on that. It will work. Uh, but if you have a larger printer, I printed these at 500 millimeters long on my Venture XL. And all I did was just stretch it in the Z. Yeah, it makes your holes into ovals, but they're just holes for holding screws to hold this up. It's okay if they're oval. And then also for this, you can easily just have multiple of them. You can join them together in like Windows 3D Builder so they're one solid piece. So you don't have to worry about seams as much. This is actually a job where a belt printer would be really good to have if anyone actually had them because they kind of died out, I believe. So yeah, so you can easily modify them. And also crown molding, cutting corners is kind of annoying. Well, with this, you just kind of orientate it in the part and then you could just slice it on a 45, make sure the parts come out good. It worked really good for modifying for the interior corner that we had here. I only have them set on this one corner in my room here. So I didn't have to do any outside corners or anything fancy like that. And then uh, once it was all up and installed, we stuck on our LEDs and then I just 3D printed some end caps and I just stuck those on with some VHP just to hold them in place. And uh, that's it. That's, that's RGB crown molding. But that's not the only thing we did down here. So let's take a look at some other 3D printed projects that I did while setting up the studio space. And the first thing we have to do is look up. Okay, side tangent, because uh, we just had a big safety issue with the Rigiba lighting. And that is this barrel jack was getting so hot I couldn't even touch it. So what was going on here? Well, we have the RGB lighting strip and it's connected to a 12 volt uh, six amp power supply to power it all. And it goes from a barrel jack into a PCB into the actual wiring for the RGB lighting. And as you can see here, this was the original one that I ripped out. Look at that wire there. That is not a lot of wiring. Uh, it claims to be 20 gauge, uh, okay. Um, and the barrel jack itself wasn't the tightest. You want the barrel jacks to be tight. So what I've gone is gone ahead and swapped it out basically. So now we have an XT30 connector. I uh, cut the wire, soldered that on. And then we have 18 gauge silicon wire going from the now XT30 connection to the PCB to the RGB lighting strip. And right now it is all room temperature. You know, it's been on for like an hour. So much safer this way. So that's something to be careful of. Check the temperature, check, make sure you're not overheating, overloading any of the connections with your RGB lighting. Uh, when you're sourcing RGB lighting from random shops in Shenzhen, um, just something to keep in mind, be safe. Because up here, is my overhead camera mount. This was very simple to design and install. All it is, is a spare piece of EMT conduit that I had left over from putting up some rep racks for filament storage. I quickly catted up two brackets that I could use to mount it to the ceiling, roughly along the top of my desk here, so it's in line. And then we just have a KNF and uh, clamp arm here that's adjustable, clamped onto the EMT conduit, and then my camera is attached to that. So that way we can move the camera around up and down the track, depending on what we're doing over the desk. We could also move it around for positioning. I can easily reach up and zoom in and out when needed. And that is the overhead camera mount. It's very easy to do. This costs like nothing compared to some of the off the shelf solutions. And again, using 3D printed parts to make it a reality. So now let's get back off the ceiling and look at some shelving. So this was quite easy and solved a simple problem that I have. This is a window. This isn't a bedroom, so I don't need access to the window, but I wanted somewhere where I can like mount my rep rack, for example. So I went ahead and built a little box out of two by fours and plywood just to block up most of the window here so I can mount stuff to it securely. But that left this one little cutout here. So. 3D printing to the rescue. I quickly 3D printed up some boxes that I stacked on top of each other with a fun little hex design in the back just for ambiance or whatever. And um, stacked them on top of each other, a little bit of glue to hold them in place, VHB to hold them from falling out. And we have some nice storage locations for some 3D prints, some Gunpla, and I decided to get a little fancy with this. On the stream where I was designing these boxes, I got the idea to try and use clear PETG filament as kind of a fiber optic line, because on the other side of this is a window with sunlight. So I put some channels in here where I can install those clear pet G uh, strands of filament. And you know what? It's not the brightest solution in the world, but it's kind of cool. It kind of works. And it's, it's a little bit of an accent light uh, for showing off your 3D printed models or Gunpla figures. But 
What is a studio without lighting? We have a little bit of lighting here, but we need more lighting. So let's go over there and take a look at one of the easiest things to learn CAD with, designing brackets. Man, all this talking is getting me thirsty. I better have a drink of my delicious gamer subs. Use code Canuck, save 10% today. Let me get this light off so you can actually see. So this is just an LED light. Um, it's a Coda brand light. I buy these at Costco and I like them because they're a pretty good just fill light in my studio. I don't have a lot of room. So stuff that's compact is very nice for me. You can mount them up on the walls. You can change the brightness on them. And uh, they make really good just kind of fill lights for the studio. Uh, the problem is I needed to mount this vertically so I can fill in from this side of the desk. So how do you mount it vertically? 3D printed brackets. One of the easiest things to learn CAD design with is brackets uh, for storage, for mounting shelves, for holding light fixtures. Brackets are a great way to learn CAD and to make use of your printer to make things that while you can buy them, you can customize them to your use case and you can save yourself quite a bit of money as well. It, it adds up quickly when you need to make a lot of brackets. So this is just a light held onto the wall with some brackets. Easy peasy, lemony squeezy. And yes, cable management is an ongoing thing with the studio. I'm moving stuff around right now, but we have 3D printed brackets up here for cable management. I have 3D printed zip pie holders that I screwed into the ceiling. There's already enough holes in the walls and ceiling in this room. I don't care about a couple more. Oh, and while we're here, we're gonna talk about these quickly. These are rep racks. You 3D print the bracket. You can use dowels, EMT conduit, whatever sort of tube uh, to hold them together and you mount them on the wall and you store filament with them. These are great. These are really useful to use and you don't have to use them for filament. You can just, you know, use them as shelving if you want. Just put a, a board over them. Very customizable, very quick to do, very easy to do, and they're great. So um, put some rep racks up. Believe me, they come in handy. So there we have it, a quick little tour of all the 3D printed accessories and projects that I'm doing to set up my studio space here in the basement. It's not quite done yet. I still have to put stuff up on the walls. I've got a bunch of helmets. I need some 3D printed holders so I can mount them up here, but that's coming in the future. And also, if you're wondering where the six foot Gundam is, um, that's currently packed up because I'm bringing it to 3D Printopia this weekend. So if you're making your way out to Bel Air, Maryland, uh, be sure to stop by the Prusa booth, check it out. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something new. I hope you got inspired to use your 3D printers for some cool projects. They don't just print benchies. You can use them to get creative. I mean, RGB crown molding, how cool is that? As always, make sure you like the smash button, subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed, you're not gonna wanna miss out on cool stuff like this in the future. And be sure to tune in when we do our live streams. Also, hey, I'm streaming on Twitch right now. So follow me on Twitch, Nero3D, uh, side project stuff, hanging out stuff, stuff that doesn't really fit on the main channel usually. We're gonna be doing some more of that stuff in the future on Twitch. I'm Taylor Canuck Creator. Enjoy the rest of your week. Take care out there, wash your hands, and I will see you in the future. Cheers.